go with Hezekiah with the traction tape there. Yeah, just in case. All right, number one, a Roman vault over the top, known in Jesus' day. Number two, this is a later Mamlu, post-Crusader Islamic vault. This was a mosque in the time of Columbus. Here's writings from the Quran. And this is the Mithrab that faces Mecca. A holy space for the Muslims. A holy space. When Charles Warren got here in the 1870s, this was called the Virgin's Fountain. The local Arabs said that this was the spring water where the Virgin Mary washed the diapers of Jesus. <coughs> The water that flows through once in a while still has a bit of the aroma. <laughs> you will see. And that's number one. Number two, the stairs put in then, in the medieval period, to go down to the water. Right now we have an iron grate over some of it. You step into the water at, at right about at that point. The point of the water leaving the rock is underneath the seven from the bottom, here, where another channel, here it's called the Canaanite channel, that's the earliest one, took the water to that pool we were just in. That's the one that we who want to be dry will walk through. The rest of you will walk this one. So? Straight. I'll lead you through in a minute, all right? Second Chronicles 32. It was Hezekiah who stopped the upper outlet of the waters of the Gihon Spring and directed them to the west side of the city of David. Second Kings. As for all the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all of his other achievements, and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city. Are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Twice we read, both in the Chronicles and Kings, that this tunnel is the culminating event of what Hezekiah did, his culminating achievement. Not just the engineering feat, but the fact that he saved the lives of his people in the city. Now the water naturally gushes. This is a siphon spring where there will be none and then a lot. And then none and then a lot. Now what the spring has done is it's been regulated. So the water flow is constant the entire time. It's constant the entire time. Because in the past it would gush and then subside and gush and then subside. If you blocked up this end and made a pool sufficient size at the other end, it's never going to overflow and the Assyrians will never find it. It's not going to bubble out. So the natural water flow kept it going that direction. Does that answer your question? Okay. Now, those of you walking through, I want a flashlight at the front, I want a flashlight at the back, maybe one or two in the middle. Try to stay together as a group. Be ready to duck a little bit. Be ready to have both sides kind of come in on you. Be ready for it to be pitch black and wet. And we'll see you in about 20 minutes on the other side. All right? Lead the, lead the way, Ray. When you, get, when you get there, it'll open up a little bit into a low open courtyard. Go up the steps and then down some steps and you'll find us if we don't find you before. All right? Up and down. Go. Do you have a flashlight? Uh, Use yours, because I want to keep my camera. There you go. Go. Half our wet, half our dry. Here, you I'm doing this because you told me I needed to. You do. I don't want to be first up. You got the light? Are you going to try and do that? I'm going to walk right behind you. Alright, let's move. Do you not want to be first?
I can see fine with you pointing forward. Watch out for sharks. Screaming like children. Okay, well, I'm glad you didn't do it. I made regret later. Pretty cool. There's a couple of people going to have to go sideways soon. Should we go over the dark just for a little bit? Yes. Somebody else has got a light back there, man. I like that. That was my favorite part. Hey, should we tell them to turn off lights? Going dark, just a all, the, all the way dark. But they got lights going back there. I don't know. Hmm. Hey, Jeff, dark for a minute. Okay, let's get up to this little bend. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you be there. Don't go dark for a second. Turn all the lights off for a second. Turn everything off for a second. See how dark it is. Imagine being down here with just a candle, chipping away at the rock. For just a For second. second. Turn those lights off. We're going to take 10 steps. No, we're not. 10 steps. This is awesome. This is dark. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah, hey, who pinched me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are they all the lights out for a second? There we go. Turn it out now. Tell them. I'm gonna do one thing. All right, lights out for a second. All the light, all lights. There you go. Now, now, man, imagine you have a candle. And a pickaxe. Yes. And you're working. <laughs> and the water. And you feel the call. And, and the water's up to your neck. It's gushing. It's probably not All right. Ready? Go. So we walk into the dark? Yeah. Well, for a second, if you want. Walk in the dark just walk for a second. It's 10 steps.
gray. Yeah. I think I see a baby root. <laughs> <laughs> we are outside the dung gate. Well, it's a theological question, right? The baby Jesus' diaper is not literally here or in here. <laughs> Clean or holy? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Depends on what he ate. <laughs>
Short again. That would be funny if like half of the cage was smaller than the other half of the now. A little bit of a stop uh, drop there. There's a hole here. There's a hole coming up. Get down right there. It has to be. Man, this is real short here. It's pretty low here. Oh, another little hole right there. I'm in some sort of athletic practice having to do a duck walk. A little bit of a hole there, guys. Now, now you can twist an ankle, I think.
sweet spot. Got the bad end of that, huh? Linda's gonna Linda's elephant pants right there. <laughs> Hey, don't let everybody get separated here. Is Paul up there? Okay. I love that. It's pretty cool. It's fun. Who's left? I think David and Sherry. 